Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless is global chaos the new normal as anyone can plainly see the world is in a state of decay moral economic political every way possible people are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone anyone to rescue the planet soon very soon a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. in the Middle East has expanded. Israel is no longer just fighting a battle in the south against Hamas. A second front is opening in the north. Hezbollah in Lebanon is intensifying their campaign. Their goal, same as Hamas, decimate Israel with rockets and mortars. Israel is sustaining casualties already this weekend from the Iranian-backed Hezbollah forces. Israeli military bases are under assault. Hezbollah snipers also neutralizing Israeli surveillance cameras on the border, creating blind spots, appearing to gear up for a full-on invasion. And Israel's responding, evacuating towns and villages near the border and preemptively striking Hezbollah's installations. Israel's promised to destroy Hezbollah if they formally enter the war. The risk for Israel is real. If Hezbollah fully engages Israel's northern flank, they'd be forced to divert resources from the south, weakening their ground action in Gaza and giving Hamas breathing room. Hamas, who's already shown an ability to theatrically ambush unsuspecting Israeli forces, are even launching amphibious assaults. Jihadists were caught swimming towards the Israeli shoreline, triggering the IDF to scramble their navy. Whether it's swimming, paragliding, or suicide bombing, the butchers are highly motivated to ravage the Israeli civilian population. Body cam footage shows Hamas savagely ripping the life out of a small Israeli town. 
targeting civilians like Al Qaeda. Forensic analysis shows signs of torture, rape, and mutilation. These animals make the Russian military look civilized. But as Israel prepares their full-scale ground operation, there's a concern that their intelligence agencies have been infiltrated. The New York Times is reporting that on the first day of the attack, Hamas penetrated an Israeli military base and shot their way into Israel's intelligence nerve center. Israeli military computer systems were vulnerable to exploitation. Top secret intelligence may have been compromised. Currently, after its initial siege, Hamas is hunkered down like tunnel rats in their underground lair, plotting, holding hostages, laying booby traps, and manufacturing drones and stinger missiles. Is there a second wave? Is this a trap? The Israelis found a cache of weapons left behind for a future offensive. You can see here rocket-propelled grenades recovered by the Israeli military in the southern part of their country. They say they found about a thousand of these brought in by Hamas fighters to use against Israeli communities along the border. Iran has called the Hamas attacks glorious and is warning Israel that invading Gaza would open the gates of hell. There's no denying that. It's just a matter of which side inflicts more hell on the other. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Zechariah goes on to tell us in verse 6 that God will use the Israeli defense forces to destroy the Muslim nations that seek their destruction. In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a firepan in the woodpile and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, Jerusalem. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9, in that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. A long forgotten prophecy that has recently been rediscovered by Bill Salas may enlighten us about the fate of Iran's current nuclear aspirations as we read in Jeremiah 49, 34-37. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will suffer the fate of a broken bow, which might imply that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps will be unable to launch scores of its missiles at its enemies. Additionally, he declares that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is the Bushehr nuclear reactor, located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah continues in verses 36 and 37. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and scatter them toward all those winds, there shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. Jeremiah informs that the attack upon the ancient territory of Elam will produce numerous refugees, perhaps even turning into a humanitarian crisis. Exiles will be dispersed worldwide as if being blown about by overpowering winds. In addition to the Lord, Iran has enemies in this prophecy. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. 
Additionally, Jeremiah says Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Boucher nuclear reactor. There's a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end-time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Bethgarma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time, when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, 
You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. All right, the guy who can't handle a few short stares insists that the U.S. can handle multiple wars. Are the wars in Israel and Ukraine more than the United States can take on at the no, same time? We're the United States of America, for God's sake. The most powerful nation in the history, not in the world, in the history of the world. The history of the world. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. The momentum is clearly building toward deepening military involvement by the United States in a war against Hamas. He expressed a, a need for air-to-ground munitions, precision-guided uh, uh, weapons, and we're going to continue to, uh, to do everything we can to provide them the support that they need. We rapidly moved a carrier battle group uh, into the region, and uh, that carrier battle group uh, provides us uh, with a number of options. But that's just the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is readying 2,000 American troops to deploy there, and nearly 2,000 more are heading to the area. Now, that would represent a major escalation of the U.S.'s role, which means it's probably a good time for us to stop to think, how is this going to affect our national security interests in the United States? Thinking ahead isn't something that people like Lindsey Graham ever do much of. When there's the chance to throw gasoline on a fire, he has the can and he has the match. Iran, if you escalate this war, we're coming for you. Are you effectively poised to declare war on Iran? That's very strong language. I, I am poised to use military force to destroy the source of funding for Hamas and Hezbollah. Wait, did he say he's poised to use military force? Someone should tell Lloyd Austin. It's out of a job. Of course, it goes without saying that Hamas terrorists should be destroyed, and we support Israel 100%. But let's also face facts. If history is any guide, our weak and woke Pentagon leadership could actually make matters worse. A disturbing report in today's Wall Street Journal contends that our most powerful global, global adversaries and enemies are already gaining power and advantage because of this situation. The Hamas-Israel conflict is proving a boon for America's main geopolitical rivals. China, Russia, and Iran have long sought to undermine the U.S.-backed international system and are now taking advantage of America's distraction. Then these eerie words from the former Finnish Prime Minister, Alexander Stubb, who speaks of a shifting and moving world order. When the U.S. leaves power vacuums, someone's going to fill those vacuums. Just as it had done with Ukraine, China will try to triangulate this chaos. More from the journal, China has embraced the Palestinian cause in a way it hadn't done in decades. It's pointedly refrained from using the word terrorism as it described the Hamas attack, much to Israel's dismay, even though there were four Chinese citizens killed by Hamas and three more taken hostage. That's according to Israeli authorities. The crux of the matter is that justice has not been done to the Palestinian people. China calls on all parties to exercise restraint, de-escalate regional tensions as soon as possible, and prevent further expansion of the conflict. Wow. As for Russia, the Lithuanian foreign minister said that Russia has a huge interest in prolonging the conflict in Israel as long as possible, calling it a big win for the Russians tactically to have America's attention diverted. Our Pentagon hears this and they say they have the ability to walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, really? Ukraine, the Middle East? And what about if China decides to waltz into Taiwan? Walk, chew gum, and juggle at the same time? With this guy as commander in chief? Denying the existence of transgender people, silencing teachers, banning books, extreme MAGA Republicans trying to undo virtually every bit of progress we've made. Remember, to him, the MAGA Republicans are the big threat. Now, if Biden really believes what he's saying about half the country, the racist, the you know, anti-trans, they're horrible people, why would America have any right to claim the moral high ground overseas? 
Of course, these aren't serious people in the Biden administration. They lurch from crisis to crisis without a real plan, except maybe to make America weaker. The truth is, the Biden team went to war against our energy independence. Then he drained our strategic petroleum reserve to help Democrats in the midterms, putting us directly at risk right now because we're in crisis mode. Now our reserve at a 40-year low, which gives all the cards to Russia, the Saudis, the Iranians, and the Venezuelans. Way to go, Joe. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.